Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so sorry about the camera quality, guys. As you know, last week I did break my vlogging camera at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, I know, the Grand Canyon. So unfortunately, we're back to basics here for today's video, so bear with me, but I have the craziest story time for you guys, so settle in. So, a few weeks ago, I am on this piece of land. It's actually a piece of land that my father owns, and it's like what we call our lake house, but it doesn't have a lake, and really it's just a house. So, anyways, I'm standing on this soil, okay, and I just can't stop thinking there has to be something about this soil. Like, there there has to be something. I, I just can't tell why I feel so different on this soil. So, obviously, I have to dig. And I go to the web soil survey, which, let me tell you guys, with Siri, it's like the Bible for dirt. And I, I can't even express how much information I learned. But honestly, guys, I have to break it down for you. It, it was just so interesting. So, of course, like every video, I do have my diary. So I'm going to be referencing that um, throughout the video just to make sure that I get all the details and all the story, like, lines correct. Um, I definitely, like, don't want to mistell anything. So... The first thing that I did when I went onto the web soil survey was I was like, how does soil even form? Like, where does it come from? Like, it, was, was it on the ninth day that God placed soil? Like, I just, I, I couldn't figure out where soil was coming from. And so I Googled, like, I, I, I looked it up on the web so soil survey and it's talking about parent material and I, I like figure it out. And it, it says that the parent material is lust. And I'm like, lust? Like, did the soil sin? You know, like, lust is one of the deadly sins. I was so confused. But lust is sediment accumulation by wind. And it's so cool because the wind blew all these sediments into these like hills and then they just like cemented there with calcium carbonate and that became the parent material of the soil. That became what the soil was made from and that blows my mind to this day. Like seriously, when I told you guys the story was juicy, I wasn't lying, but you are not anywhere close to the, to the peak of this story. So I found out that it was lust and I was like, oh my God, what does this mean for, for me? Did I strike gold? And I actually learned that lust really, like the soils made from lust are really good for agriculture and they make really rich and fertile soils. I was so excited because we could, we could like feed America in our backyard. So obviously... I did a little bit more because I had to know more. I had to know everything about the soil. So then I learned that it's Gorin Silk Loam. That's like the specific type of soil there. And I was like, so cool that it has its own name. It's famous. And I was like, well, what does that even mean? And so I look up the, the taxonomic class of this soil. Okay, I find that on the web soil survey. And it's fine, smectic, mesic, aquatic, chromic, hapidalfs, haplidalfs, okay? And I, I couldn't even wrap my head around what that meant, okay? But hapl means minimum hor horizontalization, minimal horizontalization, plus eudalfs is the suborder of aphisols, and that has that has a eudic moisture regime. And I just like found out so much about the soil from that one sentence. I was just like mind blown that there was even like a naming system that goes from order to suborder to group to subgroup and so on. And it just honestly, guys, blew my mind. I know it's blowing yours right now. I know you're saying, it, it's, it's crazy. Okay. And so obviously 
I'm trying to find out everything about this soil because now that I've known a little bit, I just, what can I do with the soil? How does the soil interact with other things in its environment? I just didn't know those things and I had to find out. So then I learned that as the soil, as you go down in the soil, it changes. And this soil in particular has an A horizon, an E horizon, and a BT horizon. And honestly, I'm like, how does that even happen? Like, did I freaking, like, do I have the craziest soil in the world or whatever? So, obviously, I'm like, well, obviously I can only see the A horizon from up top. And only I ever see grass. So I'm like, what does the other soil look like? You know, like, I, I just, I couldn't know the color or whatever. And I was just so confused. But look, I found these. These are called the Munsell color charts. And they'll tell you what the color of your soil is. So this is the color of the A horizon. Okay, right here. Isn't that crazy? Looks like a good little eyeshadow. Eyeshadow? Yeah. And then as you go down the soil, it turns into this color right here. It goes from this color to that color. Look at that change in color. Isn't that crazy? And then as you go, it changes to a completely different color. It changes to this color. This is like a gray, guys. It went from like black to brown to gray. I have color changing soil. And that has to be like a miracle or something. I, I, I don't know where else that happens. And so then I find out all the other details about my soil. And I really, really like the puzzle pieces fit in, guys. I couldn't even, I could like, I, I it just makes so much sense. So I learned that this soil has a subangular blocky structure, okay, especially through the B horizon and most of the E horizon, although the A horizon had a little bit more prismatic structure, a little more grainy, okay, and then water movement was really hard in this soil, actually. It was somewhat poorly drained, you know, runoff was medium, and permeability was slow, and I was like, so is it good agriculture land? Like that doesn't really sound really good. And I know that there's like ponds on the property. So I'm like, is that a result of the, like, are the ponds a result of this, this poor um, drainage? And so then I learned that the bulk density of this soil is 1.42 grams per centimeters cubed. And that, seriously, that was like the point in my investigation where I was like, oh my God. This is crazy. 1.42? So crazy. So then I learned the pH at the surface was 6.2. And as you go further down, it went from 6.2 to 5.5. And I was like really concerned because I was just like, I can't do anything with that. I can't grow anything in that. It's too acidic for me and for my plants because plant roots grow very far. And I learned that the available water content is 0.7 centimeters per centimeters. Guys, that was huge. That right there determined that I have to, I have to keep coming back. And that was why I felt so different because I've never been on soil with such a high water content. 0.17 centimeters per centimeters? Absolutely mind blowing. So I'm so glad you guys were able to sit down and listen to this story time. Um, I really hope that you guys found it is just as interesting as I did. I know that all of your minds are blown because my mind is blown. So as always, make sure to like and subscribe and check back next week for more content.